All right. We're just finishing up our 2000 uh, EFI Yamaha, a week 66, uh, building it for a customer in New Jersey. He's going from carbureted to EFI, so figured we'd take this opportunity to explain the motor to our customer and everybody else on YouTube. Uh, we're going to start, basically this is the front of the motor, this will be where the boat is, this is the air intake, in case you don't know. This is where the injectors go, they're not installed yet, we had them ultrasonically cleaned and tested, so now they're going to go in. Uh, we recommend you ultrasonically clean and test your injectors every two years. Okay, so we go back a little bit, we'll do this uh, almost geographically. This is a TPS, stands for Throttle Position Sensor. And it, what it does is it tells the computer that uh, on that whatever RPM range it wants to be. So if you're at idle, it says I'm at idle. So we advance the, we don't advance the timing hardly at all or at all at anything. And we fire the injection injectors just a little bit because I'm just idling. I don't need a lot of fuel. Um, prone to fail component. It's like your thermostat at home. So it's like a rheostat inside. It's constantly moving all the time so it's the basically other than the flywheel and the key switch it's the only moving part in the ignition system therefore it's most likely to fail we we replace them on our remands or replace this one it's a used one they're about 200 bucks very easy to change if you want to be proactive and have this motor do it uh, lots and lots of motors even carbureted motors have tps's uh, this is the vst tank stands for vapor separating tank reason for it briefly injectors need pure fuel with no air in it if you drew the fuel right from the gas tank it would be loaded with air the injectors wouldn't work right so you've got a, a, a feed and a return actually a feed and a return and it puts about 30 pounds of psi in there there's a lot of stuff on the internet about vst filters they do clog a lot um, generally only when you have fuel contamination so before you rip it apart and change it this one's a brand new course you, put, you hook a fuel pressure gauge to it, which you can buy as low price as $25, and you check your fuel pressure. If your fuel pressure is below like 35 pounds on most motors, you probably do have to replace the VST filter. If that looks okay, you might want to do the, the motor itself, the high pressure fuel pump. It's very expensive. So um, always check it just before you go replacing things. It also has to lift the fuel from the gas tank to the to the motor and has traditional diaphragm pumps there's one here and there's one behind the vst those are brand new it works off pulses of the engine it's just a diaphragm pump very effective this wouldn't be able to lift fuel into the uh, motor because it has to be this has to be filled with fuel so the way to look at it is the lift pumps fill the vst with fuel there's your oil tank now this is the onboard oil tank there's a, the tank in this particular motor in the boat. It pumps fuel uh, oil to this. And then there's a level uh, sensor in here. It tells it we have plenty of oil. It's a nice option because there are lots of things that can happen between the motor and the boat. Uh, and then you don't get oil to this. The alarm goes off, hopefully, if it works. And then you can just fill here. So this will run you about, uh, it can run probably 40 minutes at low speed to get home. The alarm will keep going off, you'll have to keep filling it. But at least you'll get home and you won't blow your motor. So that's good. It's always good to test that alarm every year and make sure that's working. Of course, it has an onboard filter. This is just a strainer. You also should have a rake core. It's not new yet. Rake core in, in the boat. It's got many sensors, temp sensors for alarms. It's got a water, water temp sensor here. This is a crank position sensor. This tells the computer, I'm running, I'm turning over. And so the reason, one of the reasons for it is it tells the computer RPMs to give it some feedback. And also tells the um, fuel pump, electric fuel pump, you don't want it running with just the key on. You can't just have it directly. You turn the key on, it's just pumping fuel. So it says, I'm turning over, keep that fuel pump pumping. If I stall, stop the fuel pump. Because think about it, if you just stall and you didn't turn the key off and you had a fuel leak and that's the reason you stall, you might fill your boat with gasoline and uh, that can be a very, very bad thing because it's pumping quite a bit of fuel. Now, probably wide open, it would probably pump about 60 gallons an hour. So this is just a starter. 
Wow, on these particular motors, it's one of the only two strokes that I know about. I don't, can't think of any other two stroke other than the 150, the 200, the 225, and the 250 OX66. It has an O2 sensor. And this is a very unique thing. Um, it's put on, it's in this housing. So we've, we've removed it. The O2 sensor is actually over here. I'm going to show you a test on it. That's the O2 sensor so we can demonstrate a test. That thread's in there. Lots of times these don't work and the customer or the boat owner doesn't even know it. Uh, what it does is the computer says, well, I'm not getting a good reading from my O2 sensor. Um, so I'm going to just run rich so I don't lean out the engine. The reason for the O2 sensor, it senses that I have the right fuel-air mixture so I don't have too much oxygen inside the exhaust. The problem is we don't know it fails. It fails progressively over years. Nobody really changes them when they should or even checks them. And if you just thread it out the top, you'd have a problem because Passageways clog with carbon. This is actually a pretty clean one. We've seen them when we basically the only way to clean them is hit them with a sandblaster. The Yamaha knew this would happen because it, O2 sensor and a two stroke is a bit of a stretch. So they in, 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 in and install this like plunger and it's hollow with a hole right through it and it goes in here. So when it's not clogged, it stays in one spot. But since this goes right into combustion chambers, if that orifice is clogged, this moves back and forth and the motor actually ticks. And it's kind of a nice indication. It's like, oh, here, tick, 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 tick. It's not a loud knock. I don't know what it is. So the O2 sensor needs to be cleaned out and I'm not working. So it's a, it's a nice tell that Yamaha did for us. New O2 sensor that threads in the top of that housing. So, oh, here it is. So it threads in the top. This threads there, down in there, after we clean the carbon out of it. So, hey, there, quite often you can just clean your old one and test it this way, and you're good because these from Yamaha are about 300 and something dollars. You can get them online, aftermarket ones, for a lot cheaper. And it seems like it's the same unit and equivalent in quality. But we read the, we had to break off the book because it's not easy to commit to memory. It says heat it up. The heat, the, the sensor work per, produces its own voltage, and also uh, so it needs the heat from the torch to work a little better. Plus, when you put the torch in, it's removing oxygen, which when it does that, the voltage goes up. And it says if we go up more than 0.06, it's good. So let's. Put the torch on there. It says 15 seconds. Let's see what happens. There you go. There you go. Way more than 0.6. So we're good. You'll see it. It'll gradually go down. So the O2 sensor is working. It can talk to the ECU. And you can tell it. It can definitely monitor your fuel air mixture. Replacing this part and making sure it works really well could actually save you a lot of money in gas. So this might pay for itself, which it's hard to even say definitively many, many times. But so something good to do, maybe even every year.